Okay, so now let's uh, look at an implementation to get a better idea of what back projection does. Okay, so let's start. And uh, first of all, we oh, maybe I should make this a little bit more visible. Yes. Um, we start with. Uh, with a, a test image, uh, which is just a simple ellipse to keep uh, things simple for the beginning. And uh, we take the radon transform of that. And again, to keep things simple, we take p equals to 4. So uh, we have only four directions from which we look at that uh, ellipse and take the radon transform of that ellipse. Okay, so the data looks like this. And uh, again, make sure that you understand what this means. I mean, this is now very coarse, of course, because um, we have only four directions. But uh, here the directions are over here and the data in each direction from minus one to one are over here. Okay, um, now we define the back projection and it does exactly what uh, I just proposed. Um, for each um, for each pixel for each point in my image, I search for the line for the measured line that was uh, for the line that was measured in one for one single direction, and uh, I take the value that was measured there and assign that to the image. And it's really just these three lines over here. So um, make sure that you understand that back projection is really extremely simple and can extremely simply be implemented, which um, used to be a major advantage in former times. Now, since we have strong computers now, we don't care too much. OK, uh, so let me run this. And uh, let me take the radon data. And let me interpret that. Oh, it's, uh, you remember that the ellipse was over here. Uh, and uh, uh, setting phi equal to zero means we are taking vertical lines. We're measuring along vertical lines. And uh, see what happens over here. Let me just blend in the, OK. So for, um, for s equal. Oh, I have, uh, oh, this is from, um, this should be from minus one to one. Can I easily do that? No, I can't. Um, so the this one over here should be, of course, be from minus one to one. I will correct this. And again, I should note that uh, I will give you the data, uh, the notebook, and uh, so you can follow all this um, also on the computer. So this would be minus one over to one over here. And so this is the values that were measured for the radon transform minus one over here. So all these lines miss the ellipse, missing, still missing, still missing, still missing. Now at this point, it starts hitting the ellipse. So the radon transform along that ellipse goes up until we have the longest uh, line over here. Then it goes to down again, and uh, then it's zero uh, further to the right. And let me remind you of what the image looked like. Yes, this one, right? So we're measuring like this in, in vertical direction. We're measuring, 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 measuring. Here we get we go up, longest line over here, then we go down again, and then it's zero. Okay. So uh, this is the radon transform along theta equals zero. And uh, now let's look at the back projection. And um, before I show it to you, let's uh, ex let's look at what we would expect. Uh, we back project along vertical lines, along the measurement lines. And uh, so we expect the image to be constant along vertical lines. And it, it should have exactly the values that I measured down here. OK, so let's look at what we have. Yes, that's exactly what we expect. It's constant along vertical lines. And uh, it has uh, the values that, uh, I, that I measured. Um, using the color bar that is on the right hand side over here. Uh, up to a constant, by the way. I've multiplied by a constant to make it uh, a little bit uh, more reasonable. 
Okay, so that's uh, the back projection from one angle. And please note that uh, since I know that uh, the um, support that the support of F is inside uh, the unit sphere, I've already cut out everything outside the unit sphere here. Okay, so that's exactly what we would expect. Uh, now let's do it for the four directions that we've actually measured. So I do the same thing along all all the four directions. And uh, maybe I should just, just to be absolutely sure, let me take a different direction. So um, we're now measuring along, we now have theta to 45 degrees. So we are measuring uh, in um, um, on lines that go from the left upper corner to the lower right corner. And there should, the image should be constant along these lines. And yes, that is actually the case. Okay, now uh, let's do that projection for all the four directions that we've measured and uh, overlay them. And let's see what comes out. Yeah, not too bad, right? So this is just the four directions that I mentioned. So this is the, the first one that I showed you. This is the second one that I showed. No, um, this is the second one that I showed you. This is the third one, and this is the fourth one. So I've overlaid the back projected data for all directions, for all the four directions I measured. And it doesn't look too bad, right? I mean, you could probably even tell that it's an ellipse that we've measured. And uh, well, that's that's a great thing, right? Um, also, I want to mention that I will usually compare images using cross sections. So uh, I just take a line over here through the image and uh, through the reconstruction and compare the two. Uh, along that line, and you see, well, the image, of course, was uh, zero outside of the ellipse, then it was one, and then it was zero again. And, uh, well, of course, we had only four directions, right? So it's um, it's not very good, but we have wrong values over here. But anyway, I mean, it doesn't look too bad. It, it's a constant over here, it then goes up, goes, up, goes down again, so that's great. Okay, so... Um, now, probably that was due to the fact that we had so few angles. So let's take more angles and let's be very courageous and let's take 128 degrees. And that's still far away from what's medically used, which that can be up to 1000. But um, anyway, let's go with this. Okay, of course the image is the same. But uh, now uh, we have nicer data, right? So uh, now this makes sense. So that's the sinogram, which I called. That's how I called it. Now let's plot. Um, yeah, this is phi equal to 1.4 degrees now. But uh, anyway, I mean, sure, it looks like missing the ellipse, taking the radon transform, taking the integral, zero again, that's it. Okay, back projection from that single angle. It's slightly rotated 1.4 degrees, but that's the back projection. And I add all the back projections that I got and we'll, we'll have a perfect image. Yeah, right, well, look, doesn't look too bad. So clearly we see the ellipse. Are you satisfied? I'm not, because that's definitely not the image we started with. This is extremely smooth. The original image we started with had um, a discontinuity over here. This one has no discontinuity. It's completely smooth. So while this gives us a rough idea of what, in, what was in the image, this is far from being perfect. And uh, just to take the cross section, this is the cross section along the same line in the image and uh, the reconstructed image. And you see the, of course, we had in the image, we had everything was zero here, one inside the ellipse, zero outside. And the reconstruction is far from modeling that. So while you could say, okay, we have a general idea, you couldn't, you wouldn't be able to recognize anything if this was a medical reconstruction. And to prove that to you, 
let's now do this on first on the modified Jeff Logan Phantom. And uh, mm -hmm. so this was the modified Jeff Logan Phantom. And this is the back projected data. So that's the reconstruction that I proposed. And you can see it's, well, it's, you can see something, but all the details are in fact gone. You don't see anything. And um, this is confirmed when we take the same cross section as above. You see that the original image, image has a lot of detail and all that detail is completely lost in the reconstruction. So that's not perfect. And uh, as I said, that's even a fraud uh, because the, uh, the contrasts in the modified phantom are far too high. So let's take the real trap Logan phantom. So that's the real challenge. And so that's Shep Logan now. And you see, it seems like the other one, but notice that this time I'm not going from zero to one and one is the value of the skull over here, but I'm just going from zero to 0 0.1. So the contrast is very, very small. And if I now try to reconstruct that, the back projected data looks like this. If you look very closely, then you can find the big ellipses over here. So they are there, but hardly can hardly be seen. And uh, now let's compare the cross sections. And well, this is the original one, very low contrast, but the contrast is definitely there. And in the reconstruction, just simply everything is gone. So um, while the idea seemed perfectly okay, something must have been going on here. And um, I would tell you how to correct that and um, um, why that is there and how to correct that in the following video.